Hello, hello! This is Jennifer from Scrapping Under the Influence. I am back with my next design team project for Country Craft Creations. For this, I am using Remember the Magic by Echo Park. This is their Disney-inspired paper that I did an adorable album with a couple weeks ago. So this project is a companion to that album. You could make this as, as its own thing. You could theme this to anything you want to. Um, it's entirely up to you. But what I did is a keepsake box. So to do this box, I, and my lid got just a little bit wonky and I didn't realize it had until it was kind of late in the game to redo it because it was mostly matted. <laughs> but I know what I did wrong so that will be in the written directions and I will put a pop-up in the tutorial when we get to the point where I screwed up um but you know where I did and this is the best part so here's the album from a couple weeks ago this fits perfectly in the top of our box and here's the fun part. So we've got this little false bottom that pulls out. So if you've got bigger memorabilia from a trip, from an event, um, you know, what have you, you can put that in the bottom of your box. You can build your album, put your pictures and everything in your album. Your album will stay right with all of those special things that you kept right here in the box with the pictures from that event. So I know I had said in the tutorial for this album that this might actually, in fact, I plan on actually putting pictures in this, which is huge for me because I have made, I don't even know how many albums and projects and things. I literally never put pictures in them. I love the papers. I showcase the papers. I don't put pictures in them. This one, I plan on it because I'm going to use this for my son's first trip to Disney World. He was two and a half when we took him the first time. And we went for his birthday, my husband's retirement from the Air Force, and my 40th birthday. <laughs> so I've got, you know, like his first magic band that has his name on the back of it. I've got his, you know, we were chosen as the family of the day at our resort hotel one day so I've got you know the deflated balloons from that I've got um, a little etch-a-sketch that they gave us that you know said something you know Palmer family family of the day um, you know just other things that aren't going to fit into a scrapbook album and I I collect lots of things like that on vacations and from different events things that nece aren't necessarily going to fit into an album and they end up going into a box somewhere so why not make a box that will hold those along with your pictures. So I will show you how to do this. This is going to be so much easier than you can possibly imagine because if you have followed along and done any of my tutorials or any of Tammy's tutorials with the Easy Wrap cover, I modified it to make the box. You are not gonna believe how easy this goes together. And once you've figured out how to do it. You can make this any size you want. You can make it shorter, you can make it taller, you know, narrow, long, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to pack this back up and let's get to our tutorial. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different, but it comes out really, really cool. So what we're going to do first is we're going to work on these little, and I'm going to show you my much smaller prototype. We're going to work on these little bumper pieces that that are in on the sides here, okay? And that's what it looks like when it's wrapped. And we're going to start with those simply because you're gluing two layers of, or two pieces of chipboard together. You're sandwiching them together, and this will give them time to dry. So we need. Two or I'm sorry, four pieces total that are eight and a half by two and a half, and four pieces total that are eight and a quarter by two and a half. Okay, you want to make sure these are as close to even as possible, like top to bottom, 
um, as far as size so that when you sandwich them together and we go to wrap them later, um, it's going to, you're not going to have like one piece that's, you know, just a tiny bit shorter. And I realize in cutting chipboard, especially that is a little hard, but, um, try to get it as close as you can. Okay, so all I'm going to do is sandwich these together. And then I'm going to set it to the side to dry. And you do want to make sure these are dry before you, that's why we're starting with this. You want them dry before you go to wrap them because otherwise when you're wrapping them, they tend to kind of slide on you. Um, when I was doing my little prototype and not using good cardstock to do it with, <laughs> um, that was what I was running into. So to wrap those, you're going to do two pieces that are of cardstock that are 10 and a half by four and a half because it doesn't, it only needs to go completely around on one side, um, where you're going to have like a tiny, tiny gap on the middle is the part that you're going to put towards the outside edge of the box. So that will be okay. And then oh, I probably just got these backwards as I did this, which it doesn't really matter because we'll straighten it out when we go to assemble them. And then, um, there will be two pieces that will be 10 and a half by I'm sorry, 10 and a quarter by, so I know I cut these wrong, <laughs> 10 and a quarter by um, four and a half, okay? But I only cut them wrong by a quarter of an inch, so it's not going to really matter. It will be fine. If we get any background noise, um, they're putting in the posts for our fence today. We've been in this house for four years with no fence around our backyard. And I put it off and put it off because we've got empty lots on both sides of us, but I don't think anybody's ever moving in there. So we have given up. <laughs> we are fencing the yard. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the easiest piece first. Maybe. Okay, so for the bottom of the base, you need one piece of chipboard that is eight and a half by eight and a half, cardstock that is ten and a half by ten and a half. Okay. We're gonna wrap this just like we always do. templates and since I'm not sure where my little pick thing is to get this started we're gonna do it with this one again maybe <laughs> okay so I did just go ahead before I started and prepped this with um, score tape sheets. Total, this project will take six score tape sheets, the eight and a half by 11. You can glue these down if you want to. You can um, 
you know, use strips. If you've got like rolls of score tape, like the big rolls, the wide rolls, go ahead and do it that way. However you, however you are most comfortable getting this, um, covering the back of this so that you've got good coverage and everything's good and stuck down. Okay, so we're going to bend and fold. We're going to cut the corners out just like we normally do when we're wrapping a normal album. That is if you're using the easy wrap method for the albums, which is all I've done since Tammy came up with it because it's so easy. I just love it, which honestly is partially why I decided to do this. I just had this crazy idea about using that method to build a box. I have not done well with building boxes, if, unless they've been from like an SVG file from somewhere. Um, I have not had the best luck creating my own SVG box files, which is why I haven't shared any. So, um, you know, I played around with this last weekend and discovered it actually worked kind of like I was hoping in my head it would work and I was very excited. Okay, so we're going to just use our quarter inch score tape and we're going to go all the way around. Okay, so now we're going to run glue right here along the edge of the chipboard and then we're going to run some in between. And I should have pulled the backing off of my tape before I did that. That was silly. I don't know where my thing went. try to find my little pick thing I've been using because I've quite liked it. Okay. And then just burnish that down. I'm going to go to the opposite side. And while I'm here, I'm actually going to pull all of this off just because I know I will forget again. You wouldn't think it'd get lost that easily, would you? <laughs> okay. So again, we're going to go down along the edge of the chipboard with the glue and then in between the score tape. And you're doing that for two reasons. One, it's going to, the glue is going to hold forever and ever. But when you're folding it over and getting it down like this, the tape helps it grab immediately. So you don't have to hold it while it's, you know, dries and gets kind of tacky. You know, you're getting the best of both worlds. You're getting the glue that's going to hold forever and ever and ever. And you're also getting um, that immediate grab with the tape. Clearly I didn't trim my corner on this one. Okay. 
Okay. All right, so there's our base. Okay, we're gonna set this aside. Okay, let's work on our sides. So we're just gonna fold and burnish just like you normally do. We're doing the cover this way. Okay. So now what we're going to do in our upper right hand corner, we're going to cut this an angle and cut the triangle off. In the lower right hand corner we're going to cut out the square. Okay. I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing again. So now your left side is on your right and you're cutting out the bottom corner. Okay, so this is what it should look like. All right, we're going to do the other three. So fold and burnish. really because of the way we're assembling this we could have done the entire border around this at an inch and a half and it wouldn't have hurt anything it would have actually been just fine but it's fine the way we've done it okay so again upper right corner take off the corner lower right corner take out the square turn it 180 degrees do the same thing again. Take off the corner, take out the square. Okay. All right, so we've got that much of it ready to go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to find my score tape. On the left side flap, and I'm going to turn this just because it's going to be easier for me to get the score tape on here. We're going to go ahead and get our score tape down. Okay. So this flap is going to come in. This flap is going to come down. This will be our tab to attach our sides. This will be our tab that attaches to the base. Okay. So I'm going to turn this around. So I am going to do this on all three of these, I'm sorry, four of these, there's four sides to a box. <laughs>
All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove my score tape. Not remove my score tape. Remove the backing from my score tape. I don't know why I always say that. I just have like this mental block as far as that's concerned. It's just like with work or timesheet system used to say approved timesheets. It now says authorized timesheets. I constantly say approved timesheets. I even did that in a video tutorial I had to do for work the other day, <laughs> which was pointed out to me by somebody. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go just like we normally would. I'm going to push this up and over and down. your flap. You have your two flaps. We are going to smiter a tiny bit off of that just so we don't have anything sticking up. Same thing on this one just so we don't have anything sticking out and just use your chipboard as your guide. Okay. All right so let's do the other three. All right, so now we need to miter before I forget. All right, so we're gonna fold and fold and put it in our pile. So now what we're gonna do, once I get this cleared off just a tiny bit, so we're going to take these and we're going to lay them out. And this is how we're going to double check ourselves to make sure we have all the tabs where they need to go. We should have a long bottom tab, we should have a short side tab, and they should be going around the circle. Okay? Once you've checked that, then we can go ahead and 
burnish this down. Burnish this down. And do this on all four pieces. And then we can prep them and get some tape on them and get ready to start attaching and get this base built. side tab. So those are the smaller tab. And again, since this is the outside edge, you don't want that score tape clear up to your chipboard. You want it just a little bit away from that chipboard. prep one, attach it, prep another one, attach it, but I don't know. And I think this just comes from having done card swaps and other things where I have to make a whole bunch of the same thing. You know, if I have a step that I'm just repeating several times in a row on different pieces, I like to do them all at once. It's kind of assembly line crafting <laughs> is usually what I refer to it as because I'm getting everything ready to go. So then the next step that's repetitive, I'm doing it all at once. So I'm not jumping around from step to step. Same thing with in my normal tutorials, why I go through and I cut everything and label it. And then I come back through and I score it and clip it all back together and I score everything at one time same reason it's just you're not you know then getting the cutter out and cutting pieces for a page and then getting the scoreboard out and scoring the pieces for the page and then moving all that out of the way and assembling and then coming back and doing the same thing over and over and over again it gets it all out of the way in one shot it just to me i don't know makes more sense to me to do it that way but for others they may not want to do it that way and that's entirely up to you Clearly. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. These are going to go on here like so. Just like when you are building the easy wrap cover. Okay. The difference is, and I'm trying to remember for sure how I did this the other day, if I did it with the lower or not. I don't think I did. Okay. So I'm going to start by pulling the score tape backing off of this long flap that attaches to the base. Okay, we're going to get our glue in here, just like always, get just a tiny bit there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over the top and I'm going to make sure that this side, the side that is away from me, the side of this piece and the side of this piece are perfectly aligned right next to each other. I'm just going to slowly drag that off till it falls off the edge of the chipboard and then I'm going to push it down. Okay, I can flip it over and burnish. Okay, I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do the exact same thing again. And we're just going to work our way around the book. I'm sorry, not the book, the base. I 
promise I really do know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> like I said, Monday is Friday I've had in a while. All is good. It is National Scrapbook Day this weekend. I am being left alone <laughs> to work on projects today. So this is good. Okay, so just holding there very slowly. Pulling until I come off the edge of that chipboard. And then I'm going down. Okay. And again, we're going to turn it over. I'm going to burnish that down. And turn it and do it again. So we'll get a little bit trickier as you get on these last two sides, just because you've got a lot more weight that you're dealing with from the, the side that you're trying to line up exactly. But just take your time, do it slowly. I promise you it can be done. Considering I made my prototype with not so good cardstock just to make sure it would work. Okay. So again, and down. And after you've done it a couple of times, you kind of get a feel for what it feels like as that top piece kind of drops off the edge to where it needs to go. It'll be a lot easier than you think. poster in, which they won't be back till next week to finish it, but that's okay. I'm finally getting a fence. I can send my child to the backyard and not worry. <laughs> not that he, I mean, he's really good. He doesn't leave the yard unless he, you know, has permission to, but still. <laughs> okay, here we go. And burnish. Okay. So I'm sure you're guessing what's coming next. Next, we're going to fold up our sides. And I tell you what, these line up so perfectly and fold up so perfectly. I, I until you actually try this, you're just you're you're going to be blown away. So I'm going to get the backing off my score tape. And again, with the score tape, and this time we're not going to put any. How do I show you this? So we've got this flap. It's folded over. We're not going to put any on this chipboard side of the score, score tape. We're just going to put it between. And again, we're using both the glue and the score tape because the glue gives it a permanent hold. The score tape helps it grab immediately. All you're doing is folding it up, getting those corners met, and burnishing it down, and there's your first side. How easy is that? How much easier is that? Is that then cutting a thousand little strips of paper and scoring them and then folding them and gluing them and trying to hold them in place and trying to get them to go where they need to go. This works so much better. I just, it was one of those, those things where I had this, you know, as I'm dozing off, not that I'm sleeping well lately, but as I'm dozing off one night, I'm like, I wonder if I could make a box and do it like this. Hmm. I need to try that. And then it worked when I did my prototype with, you know, crappy cardstock last weekend and really thin chipboard and it worked and it was sturdy and that was with not good cardstock and thin chipboard. I was just like completely blown away. Okay, so when you get to this last side, you're going to fold your last tab up in. So just kind of fold it and burnish it down a little bit. Just so you're not having to like pull the box and shove it in. We want to make sure it goes up when we um, put this last side up. Okay. And again, just do glue down that side. Okay. You're going to hold this one down as you put this one up. 
to make sure it goes up where it needs to go. Okay. And on this last one, we're just going to hold it down in here. We're going to get the backing off and then we're going to run glue. And then we just have to push it down. your box I mean come on that is not hard it looks great it's sturdy and I mean we haven't even reinforced anything yet and it's sturdy I mean I just I couldn't even believe it so I do have a piece we're gonna put in the bottom just to kind of reinforce where the tabs are on the bottom not that it really needs it it's gonna stay I mean this thing is sturdy like I said I used Michael's cardstock and thin chipboard for this one and it's, you know, so for the liner piece for the bottom, this is eight and three eighths by eight and three eighths. I am going to just glue this because, and literally the only reason we're putting the liner piece in is just in case you didn't want to mat the inside of the bottom of this, you don't have to. I will mat the inside around the sides which is why we're not going to put any kind of liner piece there, but you totally could do that as well. Since our box is eight and a half by five and a half, you would do liners for the inside eight and three eighths ish by um, five and three eighths. And you could line the entire inside of this if you wanted to. I'm just doing the bottom because that's all I really need to do right now. Okay, so... Let me start with the bigger one. No. Okay. All right, so now we have our pieces that we sandwiched. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure these are going to sit in here. Okay, because they're going to go in here on opposite sides after we wrap them in chipboard so that they match the rest of the box. Okay. But you know what, maybe I do want to go ahead and do like a little hider in there. I think I'm going to actually. Let's do that. Just so I can show you how to do it and what it's going to look like. I am just going to take scraps from over here because I think these will be big enough by the time we... Why can I not find my paper trimmer? So eight and a half. So let me just double check here. This is going to sit where I want it to sit. And it's going to come down enough. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. Okay. So these are just scraps from when I was cutting some of the pieces to wrap the um, different pieces and parts of our box. And I will get you a measurement in just one second here. So these are made from some of your leftovers. These are three and a half by eight and three eighths. We're just going to come in here. I'm going to set this up on its side just so when I go to lay these down in here, it's easier, but I will pull it. I'll show you on this first one. And I am just going to glue it. You can use score tape so that it's like nice and flat. It's going to get matted over. We're just doing this to kind of cover up 
some of the sides here. So all I'm doing is getting this in here, centering it up, and pushing it down. And I've lost my little tool I use to burnish this kind of thing with, that little scraper. Okay. And when you do this, you've got one side here where you've got paper, you've got one side where you don't. Don't center it really, put it all the way to this side to cover up where you've got that chipboard showing. And actually, well, that one must have been cut short because it's like, yeah, that one was short. It's okay. It's fine. It's not going to matter in the end. Um, you could, as you're wrapping these, you really could um, just put a piece down that this wrap goes over too before you even assemble this if you wanted to. weren't going to do the little insert piece in the bottom then you would want to mat this all the way down to the bottom in here okay but where we're going to have another piece that's going to cover that up it's not going to matter all right so back to this piece and I do actually want score tape on this one short one and I didn't want my short one yet, but that's okay. We can go ahead and prep it. It's not going to matter. So those are my two smaller ones. So let's set those back over there. Get my two longer ones, which is what I was trying to start with. or not I will actually save that because I do end up using those scraps of score tape sheets you have no idea I have like a whole little box full of them in the drawer over here where I keep all of my score tape and my adhesive and that kind of thing or not my adhesive my um Alright, 
So, let me grab the scoreboard and our one inch templates. Okay, so after we put this down, it's going to be just a tiny. In fact, I don't think I used it on the sides. I think I just used my template on the top and just kind of eyeballed it because it's going to be a little bit smaller on the sides than you're used to having because the chipboard's doubled up, but it doesn't matter because we're going to wrap the whole thing and then put it inside. Okay, this will all make sense in a minute, I promise. as much as I can and stick it down. Did I just do the wrong one for that? I think I did. Yep, I did. I just used the smaller one. It's okay. Honestly, it doesn't matter. The way we're wrapping this, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. In fact, you could probably cut this piece that wraps around here the same for all three pieces, all four pieces, and it's not going to matter. going to do these two first and all you're going to do is just like we always do you're going to fold it around and burnish okay So you'll notice when you do this, it's kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It's not like just a flat score line, I guess. I don't know how to explain it. But we're going to cut towards the inside part here. now is I'm going to fold this up and you'll see there is if you can see that I can't tell you're going to have like a little bit that's going to be like too much right here in this corner so you're going to have to kind of I don't know I kind of trimmed it out I don't know how to, ex how to explain how I did that because it's just kind of a weird... a weird... Um... and the good thing about this is because you're wrapping this completely and then putting it down in there it doesn't have to look perfect because all you're gonna see is this side and like one edge so if it's not perfect and it's not pretty it'll still be okay in fact, I'm almost wondering if we just cut across like that. Nope, because then that's too much. Because see, then it doesn't cover that corner at all. So. All right. So I think we're going to have to do this. How that works. Okay, so. What we're going to do is we're going to cut across here. But we're going to leave about an eighth of an inch between this corner and the outside edge of that um, okay so yeah this one's like hideously ugly and I apologize <laughs> but it's okay all right so this one I'm just gonna run one piece of score tape along the top of each of these tabs simply to help it grab immediately like when we go to 
fold these over and attach them. Because again, it doesn't really matter that this thing is ugly, just so long as you've got one side that this part on top looks good. <laughs> or is less ugly than the rest of it, I don't know. Okay, so let's start down here on our ugly end on the bottom. We're going to run glue. And you're going to use the table to fold this over and then push it down. That seemed to work a little bit better than trying to do it with the bone folder, although we'll try it with the bone folder on this other side just to see. Okay, okay yeah, see, it, it kind of tends to, I don't know, it works. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect because it's not like it's a hinge or a cover or something like that. Okay, so then that little piece you left hanging out, I'm just going to take my bone folder, I'm going to push that in. Okay, see I've pushed this kind of down in. And then we're going to come up and over. And like I said, I've got an ugly corner here, but because it's going to be on the bottom and it's going to be against the side of the box, nobody's going to know. Okay, so pushing that in and then folding it up and over. Okay, so we've got a nice looking top edge, we've got a nice looking side. We're going to come put it in the box. And this most likely will fit in here tight without you having to glue it. However, it will look better if we glue it down. And this is again where I'm going to use a combination of score tape and glue just so it sticks immediately because it is down in that box. We don't want to have to try to hold on to this. So, because I actually hadn't stuck them down in my um, test box so that I could pull them out to make sure, you know, be able to look and see what I had done inside. do just like we do where we're going to put our glue in between the score tape. Make sure your nice looking sides up and we're going to just turn this over, put it all the way to the bottom and then slide it back in. And you may need to put the box all the way up on its side to do this. There you go. There's your first little edge. And I realize it's not very deep, but it doesn't have to be. It's not like you're putting a ton of weight on the top of this. You know, once our little false bottom is in here, your album's going to sit in here and then you're going to put a lid or not put a lid if you don't want to. It's entirely up to you that it's enough, but it gives you a spot underneath to put any kind of little keepsakes. So where I plan on using that Disney album for the first time we took our son to Disney World you know, I've got, um, because when we took him the first time, we went down and it was literally within a couple of weeks of my husband retiring from the Air Force. 
Um, it was my son's first trip to Disney World, and it was also my 40th birthday. <laughs> so, you know, when you call and make a reservation with Disney, you know, they'll ask you, oh, are you celebrating anything? So I had told him, you know, son's first trip, 40th birthday, military retirement. So we got down there and went to check in at our hotel, and we had been chosen as the family of the day at our hotel. So we got um, a cute little like Buzz Lightyear Etch-A-Sketch because we were staying at the, um, not Art of Animation. What was the resort we were at? Pop Century that first time. Um, we were staying at the Pop Century Resort and we were staying over in the Toy Story wing of the resort. And we ended up with, you know, like this little Buzz Lightyear Etch-A-Sketch that was adorable. So I have that and it had something, you know, like a little overlay on the front, like a little plastic piece on the front, you know, that said something about family of the day. And we had our buttons, you know, that say I'm celebrating first visit and birthday and military retirement and all this. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I've got, because we had done like a birthday dinner at the Garden Grill at Epcot. And when you do a birthday meal at Garden Grill, they, um, the characters that come around, because that is a character meal. Uh, so it's Goofy and Pluto and Chippendale. And you get, and I just did that again without taking the tape off. Um, you get a signed birthday card from the characters, which was really cute. So, um, you know, we had, so I mean, I have that, you know, I mean, just, you know, I've got stuff other than, like, the greeting card, for example, that, you know, isn't small enough to be able to stick it into the scrapbook that I want to keep, and I want to keep it all together, which is where this came from, because, you know, part of the reason, and I say I started scrapbooking, and literally I just make them and I never put anything in them, because I like making them probably more so than trying to find the pictures to put in them. Because I'm weird that way, but um, I always save stuff from trips and from different things. I'm, I'm very much, you know, a memorabilia hoarder, I guess you could call it. And I always have been. I mean, I have those little storage boxes from Michael's that are like, you know, just a little bit bigger than a shoe box. Like the photo boxes full of stuff from different trips. Sorry, I've got a hair in here. Oh, well, I guess it's just going to get embedded. I don't care. Um, but, you know, I mean, I've got boxes upon boxes of different memorabilia from different trips, different places, different things we've done, even just around town, you know, programs and maps and, you know, like the first Disney trip, you know, Nick, Nick kept getting stickers. Everywhere we went, he got stickers. And he would get so excited. And about half of them are on his dresser. <laughs> the other half, I have them saved. But they're like stuck to random things because he'd have them on his shirt and he'd take them off. And I'd stick them on whatever I had handy. And then it would go in the bag full of memorabilia that would come home with us. But, you know, I just have a lot of weird shaped things and weird size things that you can't really put in a scrapbook. But I want to keep them, you know, separated out so that I know what trip they came from or event or whatever it may be. So this box allows me to do that. I can put my scrapbook in the top with the memories from the trip, assuming I, of course, want to do that because this book is so cute. I don't know that I can actually put it in a box unless I make the top of the box a window, um, which I'm still debating if I want to do that or not. Uh, but, you know, this allows me to keep all of those little things together. So, you know, 10 years from now, if, if Nick wants to look through, you know, the album from his first trip, you know, it's there. And I've got, you know, other little things like, you know, that he was given. I mean, I think I've got the balloons they gave us when we checked into the hotel, you know, for family of the day. So, I mean, I've got those balloons, you know, in 
the box. I've got, um, gosh, I'm not even sure what else in there, but you know, so that's kind of my point. All right. So this other one, these are the, the two longer ones. They're going to go opposite each other. Okay. So again, I'm putting it in, getting it all the way to the bottom and pushing it down. Okay. So then before we wrap the two smaller ones, now remember these are a quarter of an inch shorter. We want to make sure they're going to fit. And right now they are just a little bit tight. So I'm going to get out big scissors and I am just going to trim off about an eighth of an inch. Maybe, maybe I'm not. if that's enough. Maybe just a tiny bit more. And if you don't want to try to trim them down after the fact, you could wait and not glue them together. You could wait and not even cut them until you've got that other piece in. just a tiny bit too tight. Let me try it this way. Bear with me for one second here. And if you haven't seen this ruler before, I haven't used it for a while, but at least not in a tutorial. It is metal. It has a an edge on here that you can actually tear paper against. It's got non-skip skid on the bottom and because it's metal and it comes up like this it actually has that little finger guard on it too and it's awesome and that's the start doing my prototype one. I think these worked better. Figure that out. Okay. And this is kind of messy. But that's okay. Not much better. So we'll use that one. What? You're recording right? Yeah. that one as our guide and see literally that's not even an eighth of an inch that we're having to take off of this one These are those crafters companion ones. I love them. They're awesome. All right, so let's make sure this one fits perfectly. Okay, move that out of the way. Sorry, give me just one second. So I don't have all that little mess from shaving off that chipboard. All right. Okay, so then we're going to do just like we did before with our template and our paper.
All right, there it is. There is the bottom of our box. Now we can measure for our insert piece. So right now we are at because it does push out just a tiny bit and you get those bumper pieces in there. Not much, but just a tiny bit. So you don't want to measure at the center. You want to measure down here at the ends because that's going to give you a truer measurement. So I am at about a 32nd of an inch under eight and a half. And this one I'm at just a tiny bit over eight and a half. Right at eight and a half. And just slightly under. So we are gonna go grab a piece of chipboard, maybe. I'm going to cut this with my dolly cutter. And I'm going to go just a hair under eight and a half. Okay. So now we're going to fit it, make sure it's going to fit in here, make sure we don't need to trim any more off. See how that just sits down in there? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> okay. So now we're going to cut a piece that's ten and a half by ten and a half. We're going to wrap this just like you did for your bottom piece of your box. And then you're going to cut a piece that's going to be I'm not going quite eight and three eighths I'm going about a sixteenth of an inch under so that would be what eight and seven sixteenths yeah <laughs> okay so we're going to do the same thing with this that we did with of course the base of our box let me grab. I've got one. It should work. Aha. Look at that. Okay, so let's get this on here. And we're going to trim off the little tiny bit that's hanging over on the edges. just because it makes it wrap a lot cleaner if you don't have to, you know, like most stuff I would just kind of bend the score tape over, you know, how you kind of come along the edge and kind of push it down. I'm not going to do that on this just because um, where we're wrapping it, it wraps a lot cleaner if you don't do that. Oh, Hold on. There we go. Rescued the lid from the trash. <laughs> and I have stuff stuck to my hand. Alright. Sorry. Totally sidetracked here. Again, one inch templates. And then we're going to pull our backing off. Our usual process. Okay. And we're going to wrap this just like normal. Okay, we're going to cut 
our corners out just like normal. this be great like as a wedding keepsake box really you could size this just about any way you wanted to if you were doing like a really small box I wouldn't go to this extreme to make sure it's you know this sturdy because it's not really necessary with something smaller but you know something larger you do want it a good sturdy box or you could go the easy route and you know repurpose something else but where's the fun in that <laughs> Now, if you've got something really cool, I have actually done that. I had a box that, like, had, I don't remember what it was, I think, like, cookies or something in it that we'd gotten one year at Christmas that was really heavy and had, like, a magnetic closure on it. It was really cool. Then I did actually, like, recover and repurpose into something else, so. Um, but for something like this, because I wanted a certain size and whatnot, and it doesn't. It doesn't really work. So we are just gonna, if you can hear the video game in the background, I apologize. Okay. We're just gonna wrap this like we always do and I've lost my little blue wipe. Okay, so then this piece is just going to go on the back here. I did cut this just a sliver smaller than the actual um, base piece itself. I am going to run it on there. I want to do it on here. Um, score tape on this one too just to get it good and stuck. Much like we would do with the gusset hiders on the traditional style of making your um, mini album covers. This is just to cover up the ugly side of our little false bottom.
going to come almost all the way to the edge over here. Side to side, top and bottom. And there is our insert. So before we go any further with that, you do need a couple of pieces of ribbon, just small ones. Um, if I find the end of my ribbon over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a loop that's going to sit up on the side there that you can grab on to pull this out. centered so we're going to put a couple of them on here we're not just going to do it on one side we're going to do it on two sides Turn it over and do it on the opposite as well because this is going to wrap around. And really, you could put it on all four sides and it would be fine. What did I just do? <laughs> that was smart. get for tension too much of the tape. Okay. So let's just test this here. So it's going to go over there over there is that going to be enough to grab onto probably not i'm going to do it just a tiny bit longer in fact i don't think i'm going to pre-cut that i think i'm going to leave it just like that i'm going to attach one side down i'm going to loop it up and over and then figure out about how much of that i'm going to go like the finger width And then cut that off. Let me grab one more little piece of this. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You'll mat this on both sides and that will cover up our little raw edges here. But this is just going to go down in here just like so and then that allows you to easily lift it up and pull it out. And you may find it goes in easier one direction than it does the other. So you just have to kind of play with it. Alright, look at that and watch how this is going to work. love it I love it um okay so I will be back with pieces for the lid and we'll put the lid together next if you wanted to clearly you could stop right here sorry I got some gunk in there you could stop here this would still make a nice little display area for your book you could put you know something back behind there to kind of stand it up like this you know maybe make this part shorter however you wanted to do that but I am going to make a lid 
So I will be back with the measurements for that. Okay, so for the lid, I'll give you what my measurements came out to. However, just because every trimmer cuts a little bit differently, everybody's going to end up with a slightly different finish size. What you want to do is you want to measure, okay? from the outside edge of your box all the way across and see what you're at. So I am at finish size eight and three quarters. I'm gonna check it in the middle. I'm gonna check it at the other end, okay? So as you can see there, I'm just slightly under on this one side. Not a big deal. And then I'm gonna check it again on the other side. So I'm at eight and three quarters, eight and three quarters, eight and three quarters, okay? Whatever size you end up with, from outside edge to outside edge, you're going to add 3 sixteenths to that number. That is the size you are going to make the base piece for your lid. Okay? So, let me move this out of the way. So, because of that, my base piece is 8 and 15 sixteenths. I know, fun number, huh? <laughs> okay, so that's what this chipboard is. To wrap the chipboard, this is 10 and 15 sixteenths. So basically, whatever size this ends up that you cut your chipboard, the paper to wrap it, you're going to cut it two inches bigger. Okay? I did not mean to put that on there yet. So, for your sides, you're going to cut four pieces, whatever width that chipboard ends up being. So, in my case, it's 9 and 15 sixteenths by 2. Okay? To wrap it, it's going to be the same thing. So, add 2 inches to the length, so it's going to be 10 and 15 sixteenths, in my case, by 4. Okay? I have already gone ahead and wrapped and prepped these pieces. You're going to wrap them and prep them exactly like you did the sides of the box earlier on. Okay, Absolutely identical. And I actually did not mean to cover the back of that yet because I've got one solid piece I've already covered. And then I've got a piece that I have actually cut a frame out of. So what I can do is once I assemble this, so I would assemble this attached to this frame just like normal okay I would put my acetate on the inside after this is assembled you could do it before I think it's gonna be easier to do it afterwards and then I can either leave it like that and do a matting piece on the back so that you're seeing through the lid into whatever's in the top of the box I can do this as a shaker where I'm going to take and do foam tape around this inside here once this, the lid is assembled, fill it with whatever I'm going to fill it with, and then put my solid piece down. So I would have, you know, my little shaker top for my box. Or I can cut two of this and still do a shaker but we're gonna do it would be a shaker that you can see through on both sides so you would see your album in there plus you would still have your shaker element okay so I'm gonna show you how I cut because this is just wrapped like the normal wrap okay this is partially wrapped like the normal wrap so I'm gonna show you how I did that before I do that we need to do a couple things so, I have my T-square, and I don't use this very often, but in this case, 
it is absolutely necessary. So I'm going to take, I'm going to put it at the top of my chipboard. I'm going to mark it one and a quarter of an, a quarter inches. I'm going to come to the other side and I'm going to mark one and a quarter inches. So one and a quarter, we're going to turn it, line up those two pencil marks. draw a line. We're going to come over here. We're going to mark one and a quarter. Sorry. Yeah, one and a quarter. What am I thinking? And one and a quarter. That's where I'm off. Sorry, it's late. <laughs> okay. We're going to turn and you're going to mark again. You're just going to draw a line all the way across. Okay, and then again, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, turn it, mark it. Okay, and then one last time, one and a quarter, one and a quarter. Turn it, line it up, mark it. Okay. Now I'm going to drag my Fisker's cutter in here. I'm going to take a good blade out. I have a blade that I have marked that is an older one that I only use for chipboard. And the only time anymore that I cut chipboard with this cutter is when I'm cutting out something out of the middle here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up. I'm going to bring this over, line it up on that line, and I'm going to drag it down until I get to my one and a quarter mark here. I'm going to kind of run it back and forth just a little bit to get it cut. So the where I've drawn the line where this actually cuts, it may be slightly different. It's fine. forth to get it good and cut. We're still going to end up having to cut through the last little bit of this with the craft knife, but that's okay. All right, take my chipboard blade back out and put my normal one back in so that I don't inadvertently cut paper with it because God knows I've done that a few times. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to put my craft knife in here. And drag it down just to get through that last little bit. I may have to do it a second. through or through most of it. Just got a couple of spots here. There we go there. There we go. Yeah, almost. There. the tape layer. Like I said, I did not mean to actually tape this. I wasn't, 
I was in like autopilot mode and prepping everything before I started recording again and I did not mean to actually tape this first. Don't tape it first. Wait until you've cut this out if you're doing it this way and then just tape around your edges. So I'll save that and use that for something else. I don't know. Who knows what? We'll figure it out later. got any weird you know rough edges or whatever just kind of clean those up okay so now we're going to take our scoreboard and our templates just like we always do and our wrap piece get that in there get that in here not want to come off tonight. Well, there's one little strip. It's not the big strip. There we go. This does not like me tonight. It's one of those things where I was on a roll and then I had to stop and go do other things. Okay. So now we're going to put this in here. Our templates away and move that. Okay, so now how do we get this middle part figured out? I'm going to take that same little T square just because I know it's an inch wide and I am just going to mark oops, all the way around in here. if you hold it on the left when you're right-handed, but you know. Okay. And then I am literally just going to take my craft knife and I am going to very, very carefully run it along the edge of my ruler until I get across to the next line. Okay. Alright. I'm going to do that all the way around. The reason we're drawing the lines first is so you know where you're stopping and starting when you do this. Of course, be careful when you do this. God knows I have cut my finger open with this knife. I can't tell you how many times. It is probably the best craft knife I've used, but it is so wicked sharp. I'm not even kidding you, especially when there's a new blade in it and there is a new blade in this one. So I'm going to be very careful so I don't bleed all over our project because that would be bad. <laughs> okay. So now we have cut that out of the middle. Okay. What you're going to do now is you're going to line this up again. You're going to line it from this corner here to this corner here. And you're just going to cut. Okay. And you're going to do the same thing on this one. It's a little bit crooked, but it'll be fine. So, what we're going to do here is you're going to use, fold it back against the chipboard, 
Use your bone folder to get that worked up on there. And then we're going to go around and tape it down just like we do when we wrap the outside edge. We're just going to go ahead and do this inside part of it first. And then I just want to work that up. almost this entire roll tonight. Oh my gosh. Seriously. through and get our make sure it's good and burnished down and come through and pull off our backing this one you just work your way all the way around do around the outside just like we normally do with the cover. Okay, so, and you are going to have to be a little bit careful because we have cut the middle out of this. It's not going to be quite as stiff as what you're used to when you go to fold this. So just be mindful of that, assuming you decide to cut the frame out you don't have to it's absolutely optional in fact it would be really cute to do this and to attach it down to the top here and leave it open where you could actually use it as a picture frame that would actually be incredibly cute all right so we're going to cut out our corners just like we always do still awake upstairs watching TV and his dad is asleep. So I can hear the TV in the bedroom upstairs. And I'll bet you anything. I will go up there and they will both be asleep and then I have to move the child. <laughs> okay, we're just going to trim our edges again. just going to follow the normal procedure, 
tape around the edges, glue, and wrap it like always. Fold this like normal, bone folder up and over, burnish it down, turn it around, same thing again. Up and over, burnish it down. goes to bed I hear him <laughs> okay so there you have your two pieces you can do it with just this piece you can do it with just this piece it is entirely up to you but let's go ahead and attach the sides of our box lid so we're gonna do this just like before our tape off and run our glue and we are going to make sure this is lined up exactly at the top slide it slowly over until it slides off the edge of the chipboard and put it down and burnish okay Turn it and do it again. that down one more side and we are in the home stretch here folks so once assembly is done then you just mat decorate to your little heart's content and you have an awesome keepsake box oh, don't do that because I mean seriously I'm trying to think how big Tammy's Timeless album was. How fun would this be to give to somebody with that album? Because they could put 
little things from their wedding, their honeymoon in it. You know, if you're taking your kids or your grandkids to Disney for the first time, which like I said, that's what this one, the plan is. You know, when you have things you're saving from that, from, you know, I mean, even, you know, baby's first year, I've got a metric ton of stuff that I saved from Nick's first year. You know, I've got the balloons from, that my mom sent us because when I had, when I had Nick, we were stationed in Georgia. My whole family was here in Utah. So it was literally just me and my husband. And my mom sent, you know, flowers and stuff. And there were balloons with the flowers to the hospital. So I saved those. I have the balloons from Nick's first birthday. Um, you know, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so we're going to do this just like we did before. Bring this up. Line up your corners. Match that tab. Get up. Line up your corners. Push down that tab. And I can see I got one side of this just slightly high, but that's okay. It's handmade. It's not door bought and perfect. Okay. No, don't do that yet. Okay. There is our lid. box and there you go it's not too loose it's not too small we have enough room once we mat this this is going to fit absolutely perfectly so let's discuss we're going to make this into a shaker i'm kind of leaning that way just because i love shakers they are one of my absolute favorite things to make. If I could figure out a way to incorporate them into every single album I make, I probably would do it. I made for the very first crop I ever went to, ever. And I mean, at that point, I had been a paper crafter for, oh my God, like 12 years, 11 or 12 years before I ever went to my very first crop. And they did a card exchange and they did a recipe exchange and it was something like, I don't know, I think I had to make like 47 cards. I made 47 shaker cards. Doodle bug ones with a little, um, uh, gingerbread man on the front. They were absolutely adorable and I honestly have forgotten how cute they were until a friend that I met at that same event I guess she was cleaning some stuff out and she's like I found the card that you did for this and she sent me a picture of it and I was like that was pretty stinking cute I'd forgotten <laughs> okay so I cut this just eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters because that's going to sit in there just perfectly I'm going to leave the paper on it just so you can see it as I prep it to actually go down in the inside here. And so I can see it and figure out where my tape needs to go on my acetate and so that as I'm moving it on my mat here and turning it, it's not getting scratched. Because this stuff will stay on there pretty good right up until I decide to take it off because it's staticky. Okay. Go 
ahead and pull that off. Line this up in here and lay it down. And then I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to burnish that down. Which in and of itself with acetate is not the easiest thing because it does like to slide. All right, so let's see, I've got a bubble over here. twisted in here darn it okay no problem fortunately you're not going to be able to see where I'm pulling this out from and it's not going to matter because it's going to get covered up okay so we're going to try this a little bit differently going to do this time because that did really decide to slide on me. I'm going to pull up one side completely and we're going to pull another one partially up. I'm going to fold that out so I can get a hold of it. here. Okay. Okay. Pull that out. Just run my finger along in there. Much better. Pull two into the burnishing and ended up causing that to bubble. It's okay. Easily fixable. So now, are we going to add a shaker and just leave it closed up? Are we going to just leave it open like this, in which case we would just sandwich this piece down in here to, if it wants to sandwich down in here like it's supposed to, you know, to close that off. Personally, I want to do a shaker. If I can find my foam tape. So this is one. I actually found this one at Hobby Lobby of all places, and I quite like it. It's a little bit wider. It's very, very reasonable, I thought. Okay, so I am just going to run this around the inside here.
you're not going to be able to see this. So it doesn't matter what color it is. <laughs> and then I'm going to take, well, maybe I'm going to take the backing off of it. And then we're going to do one more layer of it. Just to make sure that whatever we end up putting in here to shake has enough space. I used to have a Mickey punch, like a Mickey icon punch. I don't know what has happened to it. If I knew where it was, I would actually punch some just basic Mickey icons to just kind of float around inside our box. Lid. But since I do not know where they are, we are not going to do that. Okay, so when you put down your second layer, I always do it so that anywhere there was a gap in the first layer, I'm covering that up. Which the way this is going together, it's not necessarily going to matter if, you know, a little bit of our shaker stuff kind of gets stuck back in there because um, this isn't a card. Oh, I just ran out of that phone tape. So I'll add another one. Okay, well, we're going to get out the normal foam tape, which isn't as wide. That kind of stinks, but that's okay. I just don't know if this is the same thickness. Thankfully it is. Good. Okay. I'm going to pull what was left on that roll off. that down and then I'll go ahead and just use the smaller stuff for the last couple of places. Yeah, see how much wider that other is? It's really kind of nice. I like it. I know where I will be going tomorrow. If they're open. I'm not sure if they're open again yet. There's a lot of stuff here in Utah open back up today is nice. I'm happy. Okay. So now, before we take that off or do anything else, we need to figure out what we're putting in there. So I have my little box of stuff. We are going to do some red crystals. And we are going to do some yellow. I'll do those. I think I'm going to do some of those. They look like little candies. It's just perfect. And they also don't want to come out of the thing. <laughs> okay. Do some of those. And we're going to do some white pearls. Okay. And then we're going to finish it off with some black. I think. Those black ones. Yep, I think I'm going to do squares. Okay, maybe if I can open them. There we go. 
oh yeah, that's what it needed. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. Okay, so we need one more piece of acetate. I forgot to grab that when I was getting that out. Because the alternative would to be to back it with this, but we would mat this first with one of our Disney papers. Honestly, it's kind of tempting. Where it is? Let me find that one. Let me see what it looks like. There it is. So what would this look like if that's background. I kind of like that actually. I kind of think that's what I want to do actually. Just pretend here. Put that on the camera and see what it looks like. Does it get too lost? Do we want it just we don't want just the red behind it, though that would be bad. Do we want it to be able to see all the way through? This is the question. So if we let it go where it's all the way through, that's what you're going to see sitting behind it. Hmm. Very hard. I kind of don't know what I want to do. Because that would be really cute. lost on there. So if I didn't do that one, which one would I do? Where is my balloon paper? So if I didn't do fireworks, the only other one I would maybe do back behind there would be the balloons. Particularly since that goes with the album. That goes with the colors of our little shaker pieces. Oh, I like that too. I think that's what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen. So I have an extra little frame there that I will probably try to do something else with. And that's just fine. Put my other acetate away. So I'm going to cut this to eight and three quarters. By eight and three quarters. I'm going to take our piece here. I'm going to glue it on. And then on the back side, when you pull the lid off, you have this nice, perfectly smooth piece. Before we get too much further, we do actually need to mat the inside parts of our lid here. 
So I'm going to take this piece that's cut just to the right width because I think it was meant for something else. I'm going to cut them to one and seven eighths. fairly close to the top edge. But that just finishes off the inside of our lid. Much like we matted to finish off the inside of the main part of our box. So really, and again, this is just your own preference, how you want to do this. And that one I've got my um, too close to the edge, so I have to trim one of these down just a tiny bit. Um, it's up to you how you want to. It's okay. Um, if you want to mat the inside of your box, you absolutely don't have to. You could just mat that little false bottom piece, which does need matted because. Otherwise, you've got that ribbon like kind of hanging out there looking at you. Um, but otherwise, let's see this side. So that didn't want to slide back behind there, so I need to take just a tiny bit off of this one. Lobby phone tape is the backing does not like to come off. You do end up kind of fighting with it just a tiny bit to get it off. But it's much cheaper than the kind I normally buy, so it's kind of like, well, do I care? <laughs> one fits in here best because there's going to be one way it fits in better than any other way. That's just how this works. Push it down and push it down and work it down in there. And honestly it probably doesn't matter if there was tape in there or not. This is going to go in here tight enough. It's not coming out. Alright, and there 
that's our lid. I love it. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. That's perfect. So that, your book can sit right down in here. Your lid is right on there. And now this little sucker just needs matted and embellished and decorated and all that fun stuff. And I will be back with the finished project. Man, this one side is way off, isn't it? 